All right. Hello, everyone. Today uh, we are going to start our lecture 18 of bioscience. And the first part we will talk about is the lymphatic system. And the lymphatic system, and after that, we will talk to the first slide of the, of the lecture, of the PowerPoint, that is about the immune, immune response, immune system. All right. So let's get to start with this. So this is very important. You will learn a lot of new things together uh, today. And um, this is one of my favorite topics, the immune system. And by sure, uh, I'm going to give you uh, the nutshell, exactly what you need to know about the immune system. Again, as usual, I ask you, how much do you know about the immune system? When I ask you about the immune system, what you can tell me? When I ask you about the lymphatic system, what you can tell me, right? So what is the function? Where is located? What is for? How is forming? How is going to help us to, uh, to survive? Because without the lymphatic system and the immune system will be disappeared a long time ago. And that is one of the uh, mechanisms of defense. Basically, your body is like a country with bases and armies and weapons that are ready to fight the enemy that is the bacteria, viruses, or other parasites. Okay? So let's get to start with the immune system. Uh, you will learn this in class uh, today. Uh, who is more susceptible to have uh, problems with the immune system? Elderly people, very young people, sick people, malnourished people, and you will correlate that with a class today. All right, so let's get started. start. And the first part, we will talk about the lymphatic system. Talking about the lymphatic system, uh, I would like you to make the comparison of this. Highway 101 is going to be the, um, the arteries. Highway 280 will be the veins. And El Camino Real will be the lymphatic system. Okay, so the lymphatic system is a pathway of something running through these vessels. So as well as arteries and veins, the lymphatic system, the lymphatic system is going to be another pathway where they are going to run some substances. Number one. Number two, arteries and veins are going to carry blood. The lymphatic system do not carry blood. Okay, the lymphatic system, what it's going to carry is that lymphatic fluid. There is not even one red blood cell there. So El Camino Real is just clear water. The arteries and the veins, 101 and 280, are blood running. Those are the cars, okay? All right, so that is the first thing. Okay, so this is the lymphatic system. So where is the lymphatic system? Well, let me see here. All right, so if you see here in this graphic, the lymphatic system are going to, let's, let's start with this. Uh, where is that? Okay, so can you see the background of this image? Can you see like a stars there behind? Can you see that? Yes. Yeah, all right, so that is the nervous tissue. But this is just an example, because this is the, ne the neurons that are behind as a graphic, but it can be the liver, it can be tissue of the spleen, the pancreas, the, the muscles, the, uh, the brain, the, uh, can be the heart, right? The brain has nerves. nerves nerve cells, right? So, so this system that you see here are located in every single part of your body, in your skin, in your, in everywhere, okay? All right, so now here we have the artery, this is the artery, and the artery is going to turn into a small vessel, a smaller vessel, I mean, uh, the more the artery divide, the smallest diameter the arteries are going to have. There is a moment that they're tiny, are going to be small, it's called the arteriole. Then the, from the arteriole, and remember the blood is going to run in this direction. 
from the arteries to the vein. So the artery turns into arteriole, then all this area, all this area, all this area are going to be called the capillaries. The capi capillars or capillary bed. Cali uh, ca uh, capillary bed. So it's the same, right? Capillary bed. Capillary bed. So capillary bed because it's like a like a rug, like a blanket that is going to be distributed within the tissues. All right. So after that, they're coming. The the venules are going to be the venules. This is all. This is the venules. 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 And then they go into what we call the vein. Okay. All right. So that is the uh, what we already learned from previous classes. One thing before go to the lymphatic is that the transportation occur with the arteries and arterioles, the venules and the veins. But it's at the level of the capillaries is where you have the delivery, the distribution of the nutrients and everything the blood is going to contain. If, if this is a capillar here, let's make it example, capillar, capillar. This capillar are going to have only one layer, that is the endothelium. So they don't have, they don't have the, uh, uh, the tunica media. And what happened is here, in this capillary, they have openings, 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 that the arterioles, the venules, arteries and veins do not have. So these openings are going to be called pores. These pores, when, for example, a, nut a nutrient is coming here, a nutrient, the opening is big enough to make the nutrient come out from the pores. And that is going to distribute to who? To the cells of the tissue that are, are in the background. Okay? Okay. So now, let's go into the lymphatic system finally. The lymphatic system that was reviewed. The lymphatic system is going to be, if you see here, this kind, kind of a cactus here. Can you see this? This is the lymphatic system. It's the beginning of the lymphatic system. It's the lymphatic vessel. Lymphatic vessel. Before we go uh, more deeper, uh, the lymphatic vessel, what is, what is the lymphatic vessel form? Uh, of what is that so if the lymphatic vessel is a vessel the artery is a vessel as well the vein is a vessel as well so what is the difference or what is the similarity between them all right so arteries veins and lymphatic vessels please pay attention they have the three layers three layers all of them lymphatic arteries and veins they have the three layers that means the endothelium, tunica intima or uh, tunica interna. The other one is the tunica media. And the other one is the adventitia or outer layer, or outer layer, right? It's called the, actually, adventitia or outer layer of the, or external layer of the vessel. Three layers. So arteries, veins, and lymphatics, they have three layers. Number one. Number two, the lymphatics are going to be are going to have valves are going to have valves that is telling you something already so the lymphatics have valves similar as the veins and why is that why do you think the lymphatic vessels are having valves to have enough pressure to return the lymphatic fluid and where they go return Okay, and then, all right, so the valves, very good. The valves are going to be present in the lymphatic vessels. Why? Because the lymphatic fluid flows against gravity. You got it? So that means they go from your feet to your heart. Yeah, in direction to the heart and where they are going to drain we are going to see that in a few moments so but that is important the lymphatic vessels have been because they go 
the flow is going to go from your feet, from your leg, from your upper extremities, towards the center of your body, towards the heart, to the area of the heart. I say the area of the heart because there is more specific. Okay, we, we okay with that? Okay, so number one, and number two, number three, number four, is going to be this. Question for the exam already, yeah? This lymphatic vessel, this lymphatic vessel is in green, like a cactus, right? So this lymphatic vessel, this area that I'm showing you here is going to be seen in close up here, this area. This is like a finger like, uh, like a finger glove like. So basically it's a cool de sac, cool de sac, cool de sac. So that means that there is a, a street without exit, right? So that is exactly what is the beginning of the lymphatic vessel. So more, where is going to start the lymphatic vessel? Between the capillaries. That is the beginning of the lymphatic vessels. These lymphatic vessels are going to be between the capillaries. And number five, what is important to know here is this. Question for the exam again. The arteries are going to have direct connection to the veins. Arteries have direct, direct connection to the veins through the capillaries. But the lymphatic system do not have direct connection with the arteries or capillaries or the veins. And you see in the screen. So there is no a continuity. There is no a continuation between vessels. So artery continue with the arterial, continue with the capillar, continue with the venule, continue to the vein. But the lymphatic system, the lymphatic vessel is independent. It's going to be uh, having, there is no connection with arteries or capillaries or veins. Is that clear? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay, excellent. Okay, so for this, I'm going to tell you uh, one thing. Uh, Daniel was talking about the lymphatic nodes. Yes, yes, the lymphatic nodes are part of the lymphatic system. Okay, part of the lymphatic system are going to be the lymphatic nodes. But there is other organs that are going to be part of the lymphatic system. What other organs are going to be part of the lymphatic system? Many other structures. I'm going to list it right now. Uh, but yeah, I, I better do something else here first. All right, so let's start with the lymphatic system and then I'm going to mention the names just a minute. So in, I'm going to make it in green just to, yeah, it's not green, but definitely just to make a difference between arteries and veins. So this is the lymphatic vessel with the valves. In the lymphatic vessel, then suddenly you're going to have a node, a node. This is the lymphatic node. The lymphatic node, okay? And then they are going to continue with the lymphatic vessel. So this is very simple, but definitely, actually there's many connections many connections, many connections. One lymphatic node are going to have many connections. So this lymphatic node, what is for? So let's go straight. So what is for, what is inside? The lymphatic node are going to contain lymphocytes. Which lymphocyte? The lymphocyte B and the lymphocyte T. So we have actually, that is the lymphatic node. The lymphatic node, is basically working as a filter, as a filter. When you have, when you have, example, when you have here, uh, when you have here a bacteria that is coming into your tissue or into the arteries, venules, so the bacteria can reach the lymphatic node, the lymphatic, the lymphatic system. The bacteria, so if you have infect tissue or any infection, so infection can go through the bloodstream, through the arteries, arterioles, capillaries, venous, venous, venous veins, right? But they can go and reach as well the lymphatic, the lymphatic vessel. When they go into the lymphatic vessel, 
are going to capture or are going to get the bacteria there, what happened, the bacteria is traveling here, traveling, 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 traveling and what they found? They found a filter. That is basically like a custom. Custom is, custom is the same that, okay, well, I don't know. All right, so like a custom, like a, when you go to another country, you pass through a custom, so the lymphatic vessels, the lymphatic nodes are going to use as a filter. So what happened here? So when the, when the bacteria is getting here, the, lymph, the, lymph, the lymphocytes are not recognizing as a good friend. So they are right there. any stranger will be an enemy. So they are very radical, yes or no, black and white. I know you, okay, go ahead. I don't know you, I'm going to kill you, period. That's it, what he's doing, how it's working the lymphatic system as a filter, lymphatic node, okay? So these lymphatic nodes are going to be in about 600 to 900 lymphatic nodes all over the body, okay? All over the body. Now, here, these mostly lymphatic nodes, the lymphatic nodes, are going to be mostly located on the flexures of your body. So I prefer to say in the knee, on the... Uh, elbow, on the uh, ankle, on the armpit, on the neck, flexures. So everything that where you flexure your, your body, that is the most numerous lymphatic nodes that you have. For example, tell me, when you have, when you have, when you have a cold, a simple cold, do you notice that appear some kind of balls here on your neck? Like a small round nodules? Yeah. Right? Yes. Okay. All right. So listen to this. These nodules are going to measure, you will write down this, two millimeters diameter up to two centimeters diameter. So less than one inch. Three quarters of an inch is about, just to give you a better idea. So two millimeters, two mm up to two centimeters. And those nodes are not palpable, palpable. You cannot touch it. But when the bacteria is getting into the lymphatic node, the lymphatic node get upset. So they start to produce a lot of lymphocytes, B and T. So they are going to clone the soldiers, a lot of clone, clone soldiers, when the bacteria get in contact with the lymphocytes in the lymphatic node. And what happened? the lymphatic node start to get enlarged. It's going to work harder and start to, start to get bigger, bigger, and bigger. So that is when you can tell that some nodes or small balls, right, are going to appear on your neck, right, or in your armpit, correct? Correct? Okay. So now, this is very important, okay? Very important what I'm going to say. Cancer cells, cancer cells, are actually a cancer. No, was at the beginning was normal cells, who has a mutation. So all cancers have a mutation. What means a mutation? A mutation means that the, the sequence of ATCG are changing. So the recipe of the protein is different. So what is the result? A different protein. So this different protein is not recognized by the body as your own protein. So cancer cells become an enemy. So cancer cells are being in fight, in war with the lymphatic system, with the lymphocytes. You okay with that? Is it clear? Is it clear that? Yeah, clear. Yeah, okay. So now, so that's why when you have uh, somebody, uh, it's a, uh, person have some cancer, uh, if any cancer, right? So the, uh, the cancer cells can start traveling to different places of the body. And that is going to be cut by the lymphatic nodes. The lymphatic nodes are going to recognize and start to get swollen, get bigger. So for example, when you have, when somebody have cancer, 
uh, what is the diagnosis of cancer? The diagnosis of cancer is not X-ray, it's not MRI, it's no CT scan. And this, uh, this, uh, uh, but the diagnosis of cancer is that biopsy. Write down this, please. The diagnosis of cancer is always that is that biopsy. Biopsy. There is no other way. So, listen to this very careful. There is no MRI, CT scan, PET, or whatever other imaging tools, ultrasound, cannot make a diagnosis. What this is going to do is a suspicious of diagnosis, but the confirmation of diagnosis is through biopsy. Is that clear? Yes. So the question is, the question is, why a person who got cancer are going to give, we are going to give them a CT scan or MRI, CT scan basically. Why? Because we want to know if this cancer is being spread out in different areas. You have lymphatic nodes that are involved in different parts of the body. That means that cancer can be spreading out. So that's why you want to map with a CT scan where are these invasions. Because why is that? Because we can classify cancers in stage zero, one, two, three, or four. And each stage they have different protocol of treatment. Okay? All right. So that is about the lymphatic nodes. So the lymphatic nodes, imagine you're traveling through El Camino Real, and in the middle of Camino Real, there is a rest area where actually the police and all the, all the guys are waiting just to check for your documentation and just the rest area. So then you can pass. If you are a stranger, the a police is going to take you, right? So that is what happened with the lymphatic nodes. You okay with that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now, another scene. What is happening? What are the functions of the lymphatic vessels? Uh, before that, what I was telling you is the lymphatic organs. Lymphatic organs. Number one are going to be the tonsils. Number two are going to be the adenoids. Number three is going to be the spleen. Number four, we are going to have the appendix. Number five is the uh, intestines, the mucosa. The, there's lymphatic nodes called the Payer's patch, Payer's patch in the intestine. How is that? This is the intestine. This is the intestine. This is the wall of the intestine. And the lymphatic nodes are immersed in the walls of the intestine. Those are filters. Whatever you eat, there's some bacteria that can survive the after. Most of the bacteria is being killed by the gastric acid. Okay, because bacteria, so remember, doesn't like acid. Okay, so, but still, if you have a big number of bacteria that you've been eating, some bacteria are going to be killed, for example, the majority of bacteria will be killed, but some of them are going to still pass into the GI tract, and they are going to be absorbed. And instead to go to the bloodstream, they go to they are going to be captured by the lymphatic nodes. These lymphatic nodes are going to destroy the bacteria. So that is called the Payer's patch. The Payer's patch. Okay. Number six, we have the thymus. The thymus that is a very important organ, especially in early stages uh, of uh, development. And let me see if I forget something. Uh, basically, that. What are the adenoids? We will see that. So it's not only just, so 
what is a tonsil? A tonsil is a group, a tonsil is going to be like this, right and left, but they have actually a group of lymphatic nodes here. So that is what is actually the, the tonsils, or the adenoids the same, the same way. Appendix, pages, spleen, thymus. So they have packages of lymphatic nodes. Okay? All right. All right, so that is one. Now, what are the functions of the lymphatic vessels? Functions of, I'm going to say lymphatic system, sorry, lymphatic system. Lymphatic system. Number one is going to transport. Transport basically fats, some proteins. Number two are, are going to be the location and the, uh, are going to be the uh, transportation and location, location of the lymphocytes. The lymphocytes are not only in the lymphatic system, they are everywhere. They are being immersed in many tissues. So, but the transportation and location means the lymphatic nodes are going to be the function of the lymphocytes, transportation of basically lymphocytes. And number three, that is very important, is the absorption uh, going to the reabsorption of the excess of water within the tissue. Okay, so transportation of fat, transportation of lymphocytes, and the reabsorption of water. All right, so there is the three functions that are going to ask you in the exam. You okay with that? Okay, so let's go back to, to this area. And you see here that the lymphatic vessels, uh, actually the, there's water coming out from the capillaries. So this is the capillaries and water starts to escape. Water, 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 water starts to escape. So in order to prevent edema, what is happening, the water is going, like excess of water, excess of water are going to pass through the lymphatic system. Okay? That is going to prevent from edemas. So I'm going to talk later about pitting and not pitting edema. We are going to see that another time. Okay? You, you okay with that? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So uh, let me see if I have a picture of a better lymphatic system, uh, probably here in the previous one. There you are, this is the one. If you see here, I'm showing you the lymphatic system. If you see here, we have these greens are the pathways of the lymphatic vessels. And if you see here the nodes, can you see these nodes? Where I located? It's in the flexure of the knee, right? Here, another one, another group, are going to be in the flexure of the, of the in the groin, of the groin. Another one here in the armpit. See, armpit. You're going to have here on the neck on the neck. So those are the areas where from the 600, 900 lymphatic nodes are located. Obviously, we have everywhere. You have on the hands, you have on the wrist, you have on the on the feet, whatever, right? So, but the, my, and another thing, here is going to be, are going to be surround the aorta and the IBC. Aorta and IBC. So the lymphatic system are going to be 
run a lymphatic node, sorry, there is a lot of nodes around the, the artery, the, uh, the aorta, and the IVC. Another place where we have a concentration of lymphatic nodes is at the entry of the organs. What means at the entry of the organs? You have the lungs, for example, the vessels go from the pulmonary artery coming from the right ventricle, divide into the right and the left pulmonary artery. So the area where they are going to enter into the lung, called the hilum, remember that the hilum we talked in the class, that is where mostly located of lymphatic nodes are going to be in that area. So the liver, the liver, the vessels who are, when they are going to get inside the liver, that entry, that is where you're going to have lymphatic nodes. The kidneys, the kidneys where the renal arteries get into the kidney, so are going to be a group of lymphatic nodes. So there is actually a group of lymphatic nodes in every entry of every single organ in your body. In addition to that, lymphatic nodes, lymphatic system start from the capillaries, from, the, from your finger, from your toes, and the lymphatic system are running this way up, up, against gravity, against gravity, up, against gravity, up, against gravity. And where they go? They go to this area that we are going to see now. Okay, so let me go here. Pa, 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 pa. All right, so this is the same. All right, so number one, I want you to remember this. Can you see this green scene here? They're coming around all the way up, 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 up. They go all the way up. So they are going to, the lymphatic system are going to collect the lymphatic fluid. What is the lymphatic fluid? Lymphatic fluid is water, electrolytes, fats, some proteins, and just water, right? So that is there is no red blood cells at all in that lymphatic fluid, <clears throat> except for one organ. We are going to see that later. So this is the lymphatic node. There you are. This is the lymphatic node. So these are arriving. So we have, well, there is some vascularization as well, but the lymphatic, because this tissue needs oxygen and nutrients, but the lymphatic is everything in, in green, the lymphatic node. So every, the lymphatic fluids come in this way and get into the filter of the lymphatic node, and then they go out, they go out, they go out, they go out, okay? All right, so now, if you see here, I'm going to take this picture, sorry for, so that I kind of can organize this. I should start okay. with the first. I had a quick yeah. question. Go ahead. Um, so you know how you were talking about um, the size of the lymph nodes? So does it only get inflamed once it's exposed to the bacteria? Or is there other causes of it? Cancer cells. Cancer cells could be viruses, can be bacteria, can be fungus, can be parasites, can be cancer cells. OK? OK. Is that OK? Right. Yes, thank you. Okay. All right, so now, if you see here, the lymphatic vessels are going, to, uh, are going to drain the fluid from here, collecting fluid, collecting fluid, collecting fluid, collecting fluid, collecting fluid. And where they go, lymphatic fluid are going to go here. Look at this. This is the heart. This is the heart. This is, as you already know, for anatomy, for a portion of anatomy, this is the heart, this is the right atrium, this is the uh, right ventricle. So the right, the, the right atrium is receiving the blood from the IVC. And, uh, and here we have the superior vena cava. Super, there you are, superior vena cava is this. The superior vena cava. That is the superior vena cava. Where is it going to drain? Into the right atrium. You agree with that? Okay. Now, here, I want you to remember this graphic because it's very important. Who is forming the superior vena cava? Who is forming the superior vena cava? The superior vena cava is going to be formed 
by two main vessels. One is this one. Uh, I'm going to put in black, I guess, because it's not. This one, that is the subclavian vein. Subclavian vein. All this is the subclavian vein. Subclavian. Another one, subclavian vein here. So anatomical position, your right hand in front is the left. My left hand in front is the right. So this is the right subclavian vein, all this. This is basically, or the blood is running in this direction, in this direction. And these right subclavian veins are going to collect the blood from the whole upper extremity, upper extremity. So that is where it's running the, uh, uh, the blood of the subclavian vein is going to bring or take the blood from the upper extremity. Okay. So this is the subclavian vein, the right subclavian vein, and here we have the left subclavian vein here. This right and left subclavian vein are going to join together with this vein you see here. This is the jugular vein. More precisely, the internal jugular vein, IGV. It's very important because there are many assessments that you're going to do on that later on. Simple, it's not that, that difficult. Internal jugular vein. So the internal jugular vein are going to come here, bringing blood from the neck and head. Head and neck. Head and neck. So the head and neck blood return are coming through the internal jugular vein. The internal jugular vein, internal jugular vein, are going to join with a subclavian vein from each side, and they are going to form two branches, this and this. So remember, we are not talking about the opposite direction because the, we are talking about, we are following the blood flow, the blood flow, the blood flow. The blood flow coming from the head and neck through the, through the internal jugular vein are going to join together with the blood coming from the subclavian vein, the blood coming from the upper extremity. These two uh, important structures, one and two, this one are going to be called the brachiocephalic vein, brachiocephalic vein, the brachiocephalic trunk, somebody we call it here, right? So the brachiocephalic trunk or vein, it is the same, All right? So BCT. So we have the right and the left brachiocephaly trunk. This right and left brachiocephaly trunk or vein are going to join together to form the superior vena cava. Superior vena cava. This is important to know, please. So you must know this very well, okay? Because there's some catheterism that you're going to need to know the pathway of the blood flow. All right. So make a recap here. So we have here the the right atrium that is coming uh, forming the superior vena cava. Superior vena cava is formed by the two brachiocephalic veins, two brachiocephalic veins, one and two, and each brachiocephalic vein is formed by the confluence of the internal jugular vein and the subclavian vein. And another pathway we have, another way is internal jugular vein plus subclavian vein give the brachiocephalic vein. The brachiocephalic vein from the other side together are forming the superior vena cava. And the superior vena cava are going to drain into the right atrium. You okay with that? Yep. Oh, oh, we okay? Erin? Marcel? Yes. Yeah. Are we okay? Okay, so now knowing that, that is the base of what I want you to know. If you see here, can you see somebody notice here this green line here? Yeah. There is one here and another here. This is not this one. It's not showing me here. So this green that you see here is what you're suspecting. 
that the lymphatic system that is coming from the lymphatic fluid that is coming from your feet, your legs, your hip, your abdomen, everything, internal organs, where they are going to drain. They are going to drain into the subclavian vein in both sides. So that is where they are going to drain the lymphatic fluid drains into the subclavian veins. The lymphatic fluid drains into the subclavian veins. <coughs> I'm sorry. Okay, <coughs> the lymphatic <coughs> vessels, the lymphatic fluid <coughs> are going to drain into the subclavian vein. Okay. <clears throat> so, in other words, in other words, in other words, saying the same thing but in different way is that <clears throat> the lymphatic fluid drains into the venous system. Is true or not? Yes. Right. So all this lymphatic fluid that you are collecting from all your body, they are going to drain into <clears throat> the venous system. Where? Into the subclavian vein. Okay, so now let's get a start here. Look at that. In this picture, you will see that the body is divided here in black and this is uh, gray. So this is representing 75% of the body. And this represents 25% of the body. Okay, so all the lymphatic fluid, the lymphatic fluid collected by your feet, your legs, upper extremities, and they go all the abdomen. We have the left upper extremity, we have the left, <coughs> the half of the whole neck and head, the half of your face, the ha half of your uh, neck cranium, they are going to be 75%. And what does it mean? That this, the, the left side, the left side, anatomical position, you know, this is left and this is right, correct? So they are going to the left side, 75% of the lymphatic system drained into the left subclavian vein. <coughs> into the left subclavian vein. And 25% on the right side, we have half of the thorax, uh, part of the abdomen, uh, the whole uh, right upper extremity, and the half of the neck and neck are going to drain into the right subclavian vein. <clears throat> okay? All right. Okay. All right, so now let's put the names. Okay. Let's put some names. There you are. There you are. See? Very good. So here is, here we have, just to let you know, here in the right side of this, this is the column. Here we have the IVC. Here we have the aorta. It's not showing in the picture. But there is a lot of chains of lymphatic vessels, lymphatic nodes. <clears throat> Look at that. This is the area where it's coming from the lower extremities, from the pelvis, from the abdomen, half of the thorax, and the, the, the left side of the neck, head, and upper extremity. So this is actually the 75% collection. And they are going to drain, look at that, they are going to drain into the subclavian vein. Here, this is the subclavian vein. That is the subclavian vein. So the subclavian vein. This is the subclavian vein here, and here is the jugular vein, internal jugular vein, and this is the the uh, the left subclavian vein. So if you see here, this vessel is called the thoracic duct. The vessel, thoracic duct, is the vessel who is the lymphatic vessel. Is the lymphatic vessel is the name of the lymphatic vessel that drains 
75 of the lymphatic fluid into the <coughs> left subclavian vein. Okay? So, um, Dr. G, yeah. why is it that the left side gets 75% and then the right only gets 25? That is a good question. I think <laughs> that God made us like that. I don't know. Really. It's a good, interesting question. Because probably, uh, I, I don't know why the right and left, why God choose the right and the left. It's a good question. I want to check on that. Is there some advantage to have it on the right or in the left? I'm not sure. <clears throat> okay. Mario, okay. I'm going to check on that. Gross. Yeah, it's interesting what you said. Okay. All right, so in the in the other side, we have on the right side, the, the vessel who is going to drain here, that this part of the lymphatic is very simple. That is called the right lymphatic duct. duct. So that is, sorry, here is where it's going to drain the, so that is the 25%. 25%. So this vessel who is coming here is called the thoracic duct or is called to the, <clears throat> very simple, the left lymphatic duct. Okay. So if we go our picture again, there you are. So you can tell me the lymphatic system functions are going to collect the, to absorb the excess of water from the tissue, transportation of the lymphocytes and location of lymphocytes and the transportation of basically fats, 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 and actually some proteins. 75% of the lymphatic vessels and lymphatic fluid are going to drain into the thoracic duct. Where is draining the thoracic duct? In the left subclavian vein. The rest 25% are going to drain through the right uh, lymphatic duct into the right subclavian vein. Okay? Got it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. So I think we are going to talk about some the applications that we are going to we need to uh, to go over. And I think you deserve a break. All right. So let's do. Tell me how much you want. Uh, uh, oh, two hours break. One hour. Half an hour. Ten minutes break. Oh, oh, are you there? Yes. How about 10 minutes? Oh, you are tired. Oh, oh you, you, too much information? No, right? You're okay, right? Okay. You're having fun, right? Okay, let's make up. No, no. Excellent. Okay. All right, so let's do 10 minutes, Marilyn, okay? Okay. All right, see you there.
Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. Okay. All right, so let's get to start, right? Okay. All right, so let's recap here. All right, so recap very simple, very fast. We have the lymphatic vessel. There is no connection, the direct connection with the vascular system. So we have what is inside the lymphatic uh, system, the lymphatic fluid, right? So let's see. So here we have different areas, and the group of lymphatic nodes are going to have uh, the name of the area. For example, the axillary lymphatic node or the axillary nodes. The axillary nodes. So you touch here under as your armpit, you touch the lymphatic vessels, right? So if you don't, uh, I, I told you it's two millimeters to two centimeters that they cannot pulp, be palpable. Normally they are not palpable. But when they are enlarged, yes, they can be palpable. Okay? All right. They also show how the lymph gets filtered by the lymph nodes and other lymphatic organs. For example, we have the tonsil, we have the adenoids, we have the spleen, we have the phagus patch. Phagus patch, by the way, is something that Mr. Verda uh, in Metzers, they love to ask, okay, the phagus patch. Okay, the lymph mo move through the lymphatic vessels. This is all news, pushes by the skeletal muscle. So the same thing. The same principle that the veins are going to uh, uh, move the blood towards the heart, the same principle with the lymphatic vessels. Lymphatic vessels, they have a very thin tunica media, similar to the veins. So basically, the lymphatic uh, vessels are very similar to the veins. To the veins. They have very thin tunica media, they have actually valves. The difference is that the lymphatic vessels have lymphatic nodes in his pathway. So lymph move through the lymphatic vessels pushed by the skeletal muscle, remember? So yes, so do we have lymphatic vessels uh, around the, uh, uh, the veins on the lower extremity? Yes, so we're going to walk, contraction of the muscle that with the valves are going to uh, make move the lymphatic towards the heart. So lymph move through the lymphatic vessels pushed by the skeletal muscle and they co contract and by the pressure of the diaphragm. Say the same thing here. So the difference of pressures above the diaphragm and below the diaphragm that we discuss in the veins. Higher pressure in the abdomen area and lower pressure in the thoracic area. So basically the same principles of the blood flow of the vein. The lymph is collected by lymphatic capillaries, so the cul de sacs that we, the cactus that we saw in the, in the previous slide, into larger lymphatic vessels. Okay, so they are going to uh, drain and confluence of the lymphatic vessel from other lymphatic vessels, and they are going to become bigger, 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 and the big uh, river is going to be that thoracic duct that drains into the lymphatic. Into the uh, into the left subclavian vein. Okay, we can be that. It's like a river, right? Like a river. Uh, what is the biggest river? The the more uh, uh, the biggest river in the world is the Amazon, right? The Amazon. Amazon is going to be Amazon River in South America are going to collect many branches of of, of branches of rivers, right? And Actually, the Amazon at the end is going to represent that thoracic duct that is going to drain into the venous system. The venous system will be the Atlantic Ocean, for example, right? All right, so the, the lymph is collected by lymphatic capillaries into larger lymphatic vessels. From where it's drained into one or two major ducts to return lymph into the blood. All, this is all new. So, the, the lymphatic fluid drains into the venous system. All right, so let's talk about the thoracic duct. The thoracic duct is the largest lymph vessel. Why? Because they collect more 
lymphatic fluid from the body. 75% of the body co uh, collection of the lymphatic is going to go into that thoracic duct, thoracic duct. These thoracic ducts are going to drain into the uh, uh, LSB. No, I, I don't like it. Left. Clavian vein. That is better. But it's the same. So I put SB, but it's most commonly we talk about left subclavian vein. And this one is the right so Clevian. So Clevian Bay. Okay? You okay with that? Yes. All right. yeah. That is the 75%, 25%. Graphically here, you can see the, the veins related to the lymphatic system here. So can you see the nodes, the nodes, the nodes, the nodes, every single node? So uh, there is nodes around the IVC. There is nodes around of, uh, aorta. There is nodes in the, at the level of the groins, at armpit, flexures, basically. So this is something, oh, yes. Quick question. Um, on that last slide, you said there's no continuity in between the the lymph vessels and the, That's and the correct. Vein. Arteries. Um, the previous slide, it, where it shows the whole lymphatic system. Do you see where it has the arteries and the veins going into the lymph node? Where? One more. Here? One more. No, nope. there you go, right there. This one? What is it? Yeah, what is that showing the arteries and the veins going into the actual lymph node? What direction is that traveling? Oh, my God. Excellent. I know. All right, so this are the All right. So this they have what we call a capsule. A capsule. They have actually we have we have the the medulla, this area. This medulla we have connective tissue, we have the walls of the vessels itself, and all these structures are need oxygen and they need nutrients. So this artery and vein that you see here, this is not this is not because they are coming artery and then coming blood out. No, 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 no. So they from basically this artery and vein is giving blood supply to the structure of the lymphatic node itself. But the structure that you have inside are going to be the lymphocytes. Okay, I don't know if that is clear or no, but the lymphatic node itself, so for the nutrition of the lymphatic node itself and the walls of the lymphatic node, they need basically supply of arteries and veins. So artery and then return the vein. So because they are living organisms, they are not actually uh, independent. So they need to receive blood supply for the nutrition and oxygen. But the filtration, what is happening inside, is not blood is lymphatic fluid okay got it thank you all right thank you all right so here we have a better picture here the right lymphatic duct 25 percent empties at, at the junction of the right internal jugular vein and the right superior so they drain into the right superior vein and on the other side here we have the thoracic duct that is coming all the way we have another cisterna chili, we don't care about that. So they are going to go all the way up and drain into the left subclavian vein. So the subclavian veins drains into the, uh, I mean, the lymphatic ducts are going to drain into the subclavian veins. Okay? All right, so here, yes, we have time here. A spleen, appendix, thymus, tonsils, Adenoids, I'm going to show you what are the L adenoids and the bone marrow. Bone marrow is not part of the, of the lymphatic system. Lymphatic nodes located in the arms is the axillary. Inguinal lymphatic nodes is in the groin. Tonsils is upper oropharynx. Cervical on the neck, right? So axillary, cervical, inguinal, 
inguinal, right? So those are actually the most I mean, easy approach for palpate for to assess, right? You remember that lymphatic nodes are not palpable unless unless they are enlarged, and that is because an infection was there. Okay. All right. So here we have. Remember the third question is is total is total telling you that there is no direct connection with the artery and vein. So that means that the artery the arterial blood do not go into the uh, lymphatic vessel. So the artery and vein are going to give blood supply to the lymphatic node, yes. But the lymphatic vessel do not carry blood at all, right? The lymphatic vessel are going to carry lymphatic fluid only. All right, so the lymphatic fluid is not going to be a red blood cells, as we already mentioned, right? Lymphatic nodes do not filter blood, except the spleen, except the spleen. Lympha so what is the, what is the largest lymphatic organ on the body write down that the largest lymphatic organ of the body is the spleen the spleen filter blood the rest of the lymphatic organs do not filter blood okay so the one who filter blood is the spleen okay Any question? None here. No question. Okay. So let's talk about the lymphatic system in more detail. And we are going to talk about the inflammatory process that is really important. And we are going to make emphasis on the, on the prostaglandins and the, on the cardinal signs of inflammation. All right. So I think with that, I need one hour. What time is it? Okay. All right, so let's do the intro here. Okay, the immune system. So here we have the immune organs. We have the thymus. We are going to explain now. Tonsils, adenoids, spleen, lymph, uh, lymph, uh, lymph glands that are the lymphatic nodes. The bone marrow is not part of the immune system partially, but in this course, they don't consider that. So I need to just erase that. I need to correct that. I just noticed that now. And uh, we have the payers patch. I'm going to put here payers patch. <clears throat> the payers patch. These patch are the lymphatic nodes that are immersed in, within the walls of the intestine. All right, so let's talk about the immune system. Immune system, okay? Immune system is integrated by organs, tissue cells, and cell products such antibodies. We are going to talk about antibodies today that differentiate self from no self and neutralize potential pathogenic Organism, organism and substance. So in other words, protect us from infections, the immune system. Okay, infection means you have bacterial infection, infection, you can say viral infection, 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 we have fungal, fungal, infection, infection, protozoa, infection, parasite, infection. So infection is not just for bacteria, what is my point? Infection can be any organism who is going to invade your body. All right, so we have immune system divided in no specific and specific. All right, so for this, I'm going to show you here, is we have the thymus. This is the thymus. This thymus is an important organ in order to uh, uh, develop some type of lymphocytes that we are going to talk today. So this is mostly located behind the sternum behind the sternum is a retro external location and this is big at the beginning but then with the time when you get adult the thymus get as a remnant it's going to be tiny but it's still located behind the sternum okay so let's talk about the noise specific and the specific 
All right, so for this, I'm going to tell you this. Let's make a conversation here. Look at that. We are in a war. We are in a war. We are in a war, okay? Imagine a country who is going to receive the attack of an enemy, all right? So now we have what? The border lines, the borders of the country. The borders of the country. Imagine, imagine you are the president and you need to organize your army against the attack of some invader. So you have your country and you have the you you know very well what are the border lines the borders of your country in addition to that you know that inside your your country you have different bases different states they have different number of bases so what are in those bases in those bases what we have is soldiers our soldiers right the soldiers are going to be on the inside the bases of the the basis on each state okay perfect so now when somebody is going to attack the country the 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 first line of defense the first line of the first the first the number one the first who are going to encounter the encounter the enemy are the uh, soldiers who are in the borderline the borderline in the boundaries of the country correct okay so what happened here this is when the when the enemy attacking the attacking the, the country the first line of defense will be the borderline and who is that you are a country each of you you are a country your skin is the, bo the boundaries of your country that is your country and the skin is going to be the first line of defense so what does it mean the first line of defense are going to be basically the skin. Not only that, there is more. The skin. The skin is that is called the no specific immunity. No specific immunity. Write down that. No specific immunity. No specific immunity. No specific. Think about the name. What do you understand with no specific, uh, Eric? What no specific? What do you think about no specific? Somebody, everybody, no specific. It doesn't have like a, a an Preference. actual, doesn't have a job that's designated to it. Yeah, so excellent. So what about if I said, uh, uh, you like, I like to eat, I like to eat. Yes, I like to eat. What do you like to eat? Oh, I'm not, I'm not a specific. So what does it mean? Like I, I, I need whatever, all right? I not differentiate from A, B, C, and D. Whatever is in front of me, I eat it, correct? That means no specific, right? So that, that no specific defense, what does that mean? Is that they will not differentiate be, between enemies. So they need, to, they need to be enemy. They cannot recognize by the body. And this enemy, it could be green, blue, black, yellow, whatever. Small, medium size, big size, sh different shape. Doesn't matter. Your enemy, enemy. I don't care if you if you do this or that. Your enemy, I'm going to kill you. That is no specific. And the skin is basically a no specific defense because whatever bacteria, whatever microbe trying to get into the, it's not just are going to stop the entry of Staphylococcus aureus only. No, it's going to be no specific. So it's going to be preventing the invasion of many other bacteria, many other microorganisms. That's why it's called the no specific. Can you give me that? That's okay. no. Write down this, no specific, no specific uh, uh, defenses are going to be number one the skin no specific defenses number one the skin number two what do you think gastric acid yes or no the gastric acid the gastric acid is going to basically kill bacteria so when you eat bacteria 
Tell me, tell me, Miss O. O. When you have a candy on the floor, you count one, two, three, four, five, and you eat it. Yes or no? No, right? No. Miss O, you listen to me? Yes, yes. You, you don't do that, right? Okay. Why? Because there is a lot of bacteria already in the candy, right? But you're still eating. The bacteria is going to be, for example, and make it like 1,000 bacteria. You eat that, most of the bacteria will be killed by the, by the gastric acid, the first line of defense. So it doesn't matter if this is bacteria, it's A, B, C, B, whatever, whatever bacteria is. But if you have two more than 1,000, let's put it 1 million, it's a big difference, right? The first line of defense is not enough to stop the invasion. It's going to kill most of them, but some of them are going to still go in his pathway. Okay, with that? Okay, so number one, skin. Number two. Number two is the gastric acid. Number three. Uh, it's going to be the, all the mucosa of the respiratory tract. Respiratory tract mucosa. Respiratory tract mucosa. That is the first line of defense again. Uh, sweat, sweating, sweating, sweating. They have antibodies. Sweat are going to have that. Uh, genitalia uh, secretions. Genitalia. The mucosa of the genitalia. The mucosa of the oropharynx of the mouth. First line of defense will be the conjunctiva of the eye. Hair. See, nails. Those are first line. So everything that covers your body from out to in. The, what is the tube here? The nose, the mouth, the genital area. So all these areas are going to have the first line of defense. So you can tell, for example, the vaginal area, the vaginal area is acid. It's acid. It's acid. This acidity is made of in order to prevent the growth of bacteria. Because one more time, I was telling you, the bacteria hate acid. Hate acidity. So they are not going to survive or reproduce in acidity. So that is the first line of defense. You okay with that? Then, what happens if the barriers are not enough? What happens if the enemy are like a, a, the D-Day, D-Day, right? Very nice, they, well, no, it's not nice, but well, are very respectful for that, and thankful, thankful for that. The, the D-Day, they was breaking down the, the first line of defense of the, of, of the enemies at that time, all right? And then they go inside, all right? All right, so, well, it's not a good example because we are not an infection. Anyhow, whatever. So, uh, so once they pass into the first line of defense, they go into the cities, into the streets. And here, when it's inside the body, there is another group of cells who are going to participate in the defense of your body. So those are the second line of defense. What is the second line of defense? The second line of defense will be the white cells. That is where it's coming, the white cells. So the white cells are going to be working when you have this, um, when you have this uh, uh, invasion, passing the first line of defense, invading your body. And the white cells are actually right around these. The second line of defense are no specific as well. No specific, uh, no specific defense. No specific immune system. Non-specific. So they don't care if you are A, B, C, D, black, green, yellow, whatever. Your enemy bacteria, they are going to kill. You okay with that? The second line of defense. All right. So now they're going to fight street by street, meter by meter building by building, right? So those are the white cells. Now, but you know that every army, 
every army is going to have special forces, right? Special forces. The special forces, give me one special force name. It's the green boy, how you call it? Green boys. Green berets. Green what? Berets, like the hat, beret. Beret, okay, beret. Yes. Uh, beret, is the correct pronounce. Beret, beret. Green berets, right? So there's another one, right? Uh, England, England has a very famous too. I don't know what is the name. I remember. So these special forces, these special forces are going, these special forces are actually uh, special. Why? Because they have a specific target. A specific target. These special forces are going to be the lymphocytes. The lymphocytes. So the lymph, these lymphocytes are going to have a specific target. So that's why the, the, the certain line of defense is called a specific immune system. Because these special forces, they have a mission to kill a specific bacteria. So they said, let's kill bacteria A. So they kill bacteria A. They don't, if they face bacteria B, C, or D, they don't do anything. So there are special forces for each type of disease, for each type of, of uh, bacteria. You okay with that? For example, the, this COVID-19, COVID-19, COVID-19 get us by surprise. Because we didn't know that enemy before. We didn't know. And they was doing a lot of disaster in the people, right? So. And because the special forces are not going to be like magic, write down these two. The, the special forces start to respond in about two weeks. Two weeks from the first encounter. Two weeks. That is our window. Two weeks. Two weeks. It could be nice to react faster than that, but it cannot. So that's why. Your body start to produce uh, produce uh, a good fight to the bacterial virus after two weeks, after the first encounter, not the second. The second encounter is going to be immediately because the first encounter is like an enemy coming with a new weapon, and you don't know what weapon was that, so they kill a lot of us. But with the time we learn about the weapon. And it's taking us some time to prepare to fight against that weapon again. That time is taking two weeks. So that's why when you have COVID-19, COVID-19, you start to produce these uh, defenses after two weeks. But what is the problem? In two weeks, you can be dead because your body was not prepared to fight against this COVID-19. So the vaccines are going to do that. They're going to give you an attenuate uh, organism that is uh, actually a part of the virus, but is not active. And the body responds to that. So that can create a weapon. And when you have the COVID-19, you can get the COVID-19 being vaccinated. Your signs and symptoms are going to be very minor. Because you are fighting from the bay, from the day zero, from day zero you start to fight. But if you don't have vaccine, and it's the first encounter, you start to fight furiously in two weeks. But between one and two weeks, the virus are going to make a lot of destruction. Right, Miss O. Miss O. Okay, Miss O. Yeah. Okay, dear. All right, so it's clear, Miss O, right? Clear like a water. Okay. Okay, Miss O. All right, so that is the third line of defense, or no, or, 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 or as specific. Okay? So that is the general term. That is the general thing. So we don't have more. But now we need to talk, I'm going to talk to you about each of them in the next hour. So, in conclusion, we have the 
we have the non-specific and the specific immune system. That's all. The non-specific will be the first line and the second line. Who is the first line? The skin, the mucus, right? Second line, the white cells. And the specific or third line is called the lymphocytes, special forces. Okay, guys? All right, so let's have uh, a break here, lunch break, 12.10. Uh, I will see you at 12.40. 12.40, we okay with that? Okay. Any questions? So far? Is it, everything is clear? It's getting interesting? No? So, okay. No yes. It is. Okay, hopefully, yes. All right. All right. See you then.
below. Hello. At what time is that we're coming back? 12.40. 12.40, excellent. Thank you, thank you.
Hello. All right, so let's get continue here. We are going to continue with our lecture. All right. All right, so based on what we was talking about, we already know what is the uh, adaptive and what is, I mean, what is the specific and non specific. There is other name. There's an in innate that is the non-specific, but basically I'm going to use the non-specific most. It's easier and actually is enough to to know that. Okay. All right. So here we have the first line of defense. We have the barriers. Barriers. What are, oh yes. Your, oh, screen, screen, your screen's yes. off. Thank you. Okay, so let's talk about the noise specific. The noise specific have two levels. The first line of defense and the second line of defense. The first line of defense are going to be the, uh, the barriers. The barriers are going to be the skin, the mucosas, right, the respiratory tract, the lining of the stomach, so the genital area, the conjunctiva, are going to be the eye, right? Are going to be the first line of defense. Hair, nails, etc. So everything that covers in your body are going because hair, how is going to basically uh, stop the stop. Uh, is going to delay the attack of the bacteria or so microbes into your skin, for example, right? So every all that is covered in your body that is the first line of defense. All right. So the specific defense are going to, to be the, by the way, uh, second line of defense, just to finish here, internal defenses, those are the bases that we have in our country. And that are the soldiers who are the, actually the white cells. The white cells are going to uh, comprise the, uh, the neutrophils, eosinophils, monocytes, and eosinophils. Uh, the lymphocytes are part of the white cells. The lymphocytes are part of the white cells. But the lymphocytes, uh, in this classification, we are going to classify as a specific defense. A specific defense. Who are the specific defense? Are going to be the, the what? The, the lymphocytes. All right, so talking about specific defenses, we have humoral and cellular mediated uh, immunity. Humoral are basically uh, the ones who are circulating in the bloodstream. So those are like a police, right? Police, they are, are going to capture the, I mean, robberies, whatever, right? So the, those are the lymphocytes B, the lymphocytes B. And cellular mediated, they're actually involved in the tissues. So in the tissues. But this classification is not as useful as, as we are going to be doing the uh, the description of the lymphocytes. So this is less level. I'm not going to ask what is immune, uh, humoral or cellular mediated. So what I'm going to ask is that what are the specific defenses that are the lymphocytes? All right. So here we have uh, overall the mind mapping, mind mapping of the mind map of the immune system. No specific. We have the first line of defense. We have the skin. We have the mucus that is located in the GI tract and the respiratory tract, in the oropharynx, in the genitala, genitalia area, are going to be the mucus. Mucus. Remember, when I said mucosa, mucosa is the lining, is the lining of the tissue of the of the structures. Mucus is the secretion. Okay. For example, you have a cold, you have mucus in your nose, right? So the mucus on your nose is produced by the mucosa of your of your of your uh, 
tissue. Okay with that? Tears are going to be part of the uh, not specific tears, crying, yes. Sweat as well. Hair, cilia, including the nails, stomach acid. So those are the first line of defense. The second line of defense, we are going to have the inflammatory response that we will talk about in a few moments. Uh, this inflammatory, uh, inflammatory process is the process where all the bases and soldiers are going to be activated in order to go out of the uh, uh, of the go out from the tissues to the to the blood inflammatory response we are going to explain that in a few moments interferon interferon is uh, a communication interferon is basically like the alarm the sirens siren that is going to give you the alarm where they are going to uh, 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 trigger out the inflammatory response. Fever is part of the second line of defense. Why? Because fever is an elevation of the temperature. This elevation of temperature is needed because that temperature is going to produce vasodilation. <clears throat> vasodilation. The vessels become bigger, so there is more blood flow. And that is going to lead into the bases go into bigger highways in order to get to the place to fight. And we have the specific the B cells and the T cells that we are going to explain that. Lymphatic organs, the most, uh, let me see if I have here tonsils. No, I don't have tonsils here. So probably it's important to know where to tell you where are the tonsils. Okay, lymphatic organs. A spleen is the largest lymphatic organ, so you need to take note about that. Appendix is a lymphatic organ as well. The appendix function is not known, basically. Okay, the appendix is is think we think that is a remnant of our evolution. Uh, at the appendix, uh, there is no very well uh, know what is one uh, specific function of the appendix, but we know, for example, and that is kind of curiosity, that animals who eat a lot, uh, for example, of meat, like lions, like tigers, etc., they have a largest appendix. So we don't know what is the actual function. In humans, are going to be a remnant. The appendix, one of the functions that we can tell is that they have uh, uh, in the walls of the appendix, you, you know, appendix is the, the projection of the cecum that is part of the ascending column of the column. And the walls, in the wall, within the walls of the appendix, are going to be immersed some nodules that are going to work as a lymphatic organ. Thymus. Thymus is a very important uh, structure because that is going to work basically with the lymphocytes, and we are going to explain that in a few moments. Tonsils, let me find a picture of tonsils. I should put tonsils here. Adenoids, sorry, adenoids. You know what is the, where are the tonsils that adenoids probably know? Come on, machine. Okay, so that is better. That is a good, good picture. It's a good picture. What is this? Pick a time. Tonight I cannot because I have class. What is this? Okay. All right, so here we have, uh, we have the tonsils here. The tonsils is what you see, tonsils. It's when you see, open your mouth and you see two main structures on the side, side by side of your throat that are actually the tonsils. The tonsils are a package of lymphatic nodes. Here we have the adenoids. You open your mouth, you cannot see the adenoids. 
Why? Because this is the palate. You open your mouth, this is the palate, this is the uvula, the one who, uvula, you know what is uvula, right? Yeah. Uvula, uvula is like, uh, you talk, it's like going like a bell, right? So, and above that, this is the nasal pharynx, this is the nasal cavity, and here, actually, on between the nasal pharynx and the oropharynx, there is going to be a, a, a gland similar as the tonsils that is called the adenoids. The adenoids can produce so they can produce a problem because sometimes when you have a swollen adenoid, they are going to block. They are going to totally block the airway. So here we have the here is the throat or the laryngopharynx. Here is going to be the continuation of the respiratory tract, and posterior is the esophagus, right? So here we have the adenoid that is going to, when you get swollen, get actually blockage the airway. Okay, so it's so a group, for example, as a disease. And this is not the time for, for that. All right, so uh, thymus tonsils, thoracic duct, we already know about that. The right lymphatic duct, we already talk about that. All right, so before we get into more details, we are going to talk about the antigens and the antibody. All right, so this is the very important to understand the vocabulary that we are going to use now. Let's start with the antigen. Antigen is any, any structure. It could be bacteria, it could be a virus, it could be a protozoa, it could be a fungus, it could be a parasite, it could be a, any foreign body like for example a metal under your skin that metal in your skin is actually become an antigen because that metal or structure that is in the skin that is not part of your body are going to uh, uh, the body is going to react against that to destroy that uh, structure so antigen is what is an antigen a bacteria what is an antigen a fungus what is an antigen a, a virus what is an antigen a parasite okay so antigen. So antigen, we are going to write it down by short AG. AG. I don't want to say, I don't, I don't want to write down antigen. AG. AG is an antigen. Okay. So now, uh, for example, uh, we have uh, uh, some kidney transplant. The kidney transplant. So the donor who is giving the, the, the kidney to the, to the recipient the proteins are not completely exactly the same unless they're actually uh, twins, right? If they are identical twins, that is the only situation that will not happen. So uh, in transplant, that is a problem. It's what we call the rejection, rejection of the organ. And why is happening this rejection? Rejection with the organ is because some proteins, few of them of the donor uh, proteins, uh, the, key, uh, the donor who give the kidney, they have some proteins that are, some of them are different. They are not exactly the same. It's like, a, for example, between two people, you are humans, but you are not exactly the same. You have different nose, different eyes. So different, the kidney is as well as that. It's going to have some few different proteins, and these few proteins are going to make the recipient react against that producing the rejection of the kidney or any other transplant organ. Now, let's talk about the antibodies. Antibodies, antibodies, please, this is very important, okay? Antibodies, antibody is going to be called AB, antibody, or called the same thing is to say immuno, Globulin. There is the globulin, the protein, protein who have uh, immune uh, properties, and this immune globulin is going to be by shorthand Ig. So Ig and Ab are exactly the same. Okay, so it's a different way. It's a, the same thing, but we call it different way. No difference at all. Okay, you okay with that? Antibodies and or immunoglobulins are the same. These antibodies, as I'm going to explain very soon, is actually are the markers for destruction. 
Markers for destruction. Write down that, please. Markers for destruction. The marker for destruction means that it's not going to kill the, the uh, bacterial virus. They're not going to kill it. Are going to just mark for destruction. So it's like uh, you have, for example, a, a, you have an enemy, or oh, enemy is going, this is a cross. I make a cross, 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 cross. So now to identify, to be identified as an enemy, then other cells are coming and kill the structure, the bacterial virus. So antibodies do not kill bacteria, do not kill viruses, are going to be just markers for destruction. This, after they are being marked for destruction, other cells can identify the lymphocytes, are we able to identify the cells who are marked for destruction and destroy the, the bacterial virus. You okay with that? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. So let's talk about the, uh, these guys. Yeah, this is actually what I, uh, a pathology, I'm not going to go into much because that's why I have not uh, this time. But let's go to the first one are the neutrophils. Okay. All right. This guy, neutrophils, the neutrophils are going to be part of the white cells. Neutrophils are going to be called the granulocytes. Be called a granulocyte. So what are the granulocytes? Granulocytes, granule, it's granulo means granule. What means granule? Granule means that in these cells are going to be granules of what? This is the nucleus. This is the nucleus. Nucleus kind of weird. This is nucleus, huh? This is neutrophil. All this is a nucleus. That is exactly the nucleus. So it looks like a weird, right? Nucleus, you know, that is round. No, but the nucleus and the neutrophil is like this. It's like a three lobulated, right? So that is the nucleus. And you see inside here, inside, you have here the, uh, these granules. What are these granules? These granules are enzymes. Enzymes, enzymes who are going to destroy the, the bacteria. How they call, how they are going to be destroyed? The bacteria is here, and what happened is this is going to produce the diapedesis. Diapedesis that we saw in the previous class. Diapedesis, pedesis, that is crawling. They are moving, crawling, like amoeba. <clears throat> they are crawl. And when they crawl, they are going to find the bacteria and they are going to project, they are going to surround the bacteria, the bacteria with the cytoplasma like this. They are going to try to eat it. And when they totally eat it like this, look at that, okay, I will say here. So this is the, this is the neutrophil, and neutrophil and the bacteria is getting into the, into the, the neutrophil starts to change shape. And then the next step will be, the neutrophil will be something like this the bacteria is inside, and then they fuse here. And the neutrophil will have the bacteria inside the, the, uh, the cell, and that's called the phagocytosis. Phagocytosis, the active transportation, right? Remember the active transport, membrane transportation, phagocytosis, the need energy, right? Okay, we okay with that. All right, so this is a granulos, uh, a granulos, granulocytes are going to be same concept, same concept are going to be for other cells, but some of them are going to have phagocytosis, others not. All right, so what are these? So in general, what I want you to remember is that granulos, uh, granulocytes are white cells who are the neutrophils, eosinophils and the basophils. The agranulocytes, agranulocytes are going to be the monocytes, the monocytes and the lymphocytes.
Okay, so the white cells are dividing then into granulocytes and agranulocytes. The ones who contain granules inside with enzymes, those are the neutrophils, eosinophils, basophils. And the agranulocytes are going to be the monocytes and the lymphocytes. We okay with that? Yes. Okay. All right, so saying that, let's start with the, with the fun, fun stuff. All right, so the, neutroph the neutrophils are the most abundant of the white cells. So just remember the white cells are going to be produced, are going to be produced uh, one million white cells per second. It's a lot of them, okay? And neutrophils is about 65% of all these white cells. These neutrophils are the first one who are going to arrive to the, to the fight. So those are the Marines. The Marines are the first who deploy. And the, and, the, and the neutrophils are actually the first the first cells who arrive to the area of fight are the marines. You okay with that? Okay. These neutrophils are not located all of them in the in the bloodstream. They're on the bases. Remember the second line of defense, the bases, the, the alarm. So not all the white, all not all the neutrophils are are patrolling in the blood stream, they are on the bases. They are waiting for the alarm for infection, and then the neutrophils by, by diapedesis, the crawling, they are going to pass from the tissues into the blood stream, to the big highways to reach the area of the fight. You okay with that? The neutrophils are, I call, these guys, I call the ninjas. Ninjas. These, these call are basically huge, big warriors are the most aggressive warriors they can have in, we have in our body. Those are the Marines. And these guys are going to kill, are going to kill bacteria. And you know what? They kill 10 bacteria at the same time. 10 bacteria at the same time. 10 bacteria at the same time. So they kill the, the, the enemy with pain, with the right arm, with the right arm, with the food, with the right food, with the food. So they are very fantastic, fantastic warriors. These warriors are going to live only three days. Three days. So write down three days. Okay. So these neutrophils, the one who deploy first, the neutrophils, are going to kill bacteria. And you know what? The neutrophils become crazy killers. Crazy. They become crazy. So they, they, they taste the blood and start to kill like a machine. And you know what? They can start even destroying the normal cells. The normal cells. Yes, they can start to destroy the normal cells. So that's why uh, these neutrophils are programmed to commit suicide. Yes, they commit suicide in three days. In three days. They commit suicide. So the, the lifespan of the, of the neutrophils is three days when they are fighting. They don't live longer because after that they become like crazy, psycho uh, neutrophil and start to kill everybody who's in front of him. And that is already programmed that they need to commit suicide in three days. You okay with that? Okay. So those are the neutrophils, the first the one who deploy into the fight. Second, we are going to talk about the eosinophils. Eosinophils, eosinophils are going to probably I better write it down. All right, so this is an eosinophil. Eosinophil, I'm going to put it here. Oh, yes, I'm going. This is the eosinophil. This guy, eosinophil, is actually, they have a lot of granules inside. This is a granulocyte white cell. These granules, what they're doing is to actually target the bacteria. So what is doing this? So the neutrophils eat 
by phagocytosis the bacteria, but in this case, the eosinophil do not eat the bacteria. What they are going to do is like, actually this is the bacteria and they are going to shoot, they're going to shoot the granules into the bacteria. And that is going to be basically what happened with the eosinophils. The eosinophils, they have bacteria that are going to kill the bacteria from the distance. It's like an, a sniper. You know what is a sniper? The sniper, you know what a sniper is? Yep. Yeah. yeah. You know, one time, my Eng uh, the beginning, my English was like confusing sometimes. And instead of the snipers, I call these eosinophils strippers. So they are not strippers, those are snipers. Okay, I still remember that. I was like laughing like crazy. But anyhow, so don't call the strippers, strippers, sorry. See, see, can you tell? Strippers, now uh, it's not a stripper, it's a sniper. Okay, so that is the eosinophils. And the eosinophils, eosinophils, what they are going to, uh, they are going to basically here in here, are lytic enzymes that make holes in the germs, microbes in order to destroy them. So they are going to shoot like a snipers, bullet in the middle of the eyes, right? So that is what is the eosinophil, the eosinophil. Okay, we okay with that? All right, in anatomy physiology, I'm going to tell you when the neutrophils are going to be elevated, when are going to be low, when the eosinophils are going to be high and when they're going to be low. So this is just introduction. All right, so let's talk about the basophils. The basophils, the basophils is what they call the mouth fish nucleus. This is the basophil. Uh, basophil is like this. This is the nucleus and they have granules as well. They have granules. So what they're going to do is when you have, is the, what we call the security guards, right? So they work to alert, that is the key word, alert, alert, alert. Because these basophils, what they're going to do is to release histamine. Of course, there's no space. Histamine. Histamine, histamine, histamine. So these basophils are going to be, for example, uh, when you have any infection, any bacteria, virus, or allergens are going to produce the release of histamine. And histamine is a substance who promotes the inflammatory process. So basically, is this, the, these guys are going to receive the information or they are going to face the enemy and when they face the enemy, they go and immediately make the alarm. Who is the alarm? The histamine. Histamine is the substance that is a local messenger who is going to tell the information to the rest that some, somebody is attacking us. It's the base of it. Who is doing that? It's the histamine. 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 Produced by whom? By the base of fields. Base of fields. So we have here the. Uh, the neutrophils, the ninjas, and, and just to remember, you don't need to call it ninjas, but ninjas, because uh, uh, very brave warriors, eosinophils, the snipers, and basophils, the security guards, who produce the histamine, who is the alarm, who is the substance, who is the message that are going to let other cells to uh, enter into fight. All right, so. Here we have the monocytes. The monocytes are going to be, uh, are going to be what? Are going to be the agranulocytosis. Uh, I mean, agranu uh, agranulocytes, agranulocytes. Agranulocytosis is different. Agranulocytes, site cells. A granule means no granules, right? These monocytes, these monocytes, I put macrophage, macrophages. How is that happen? So the monocytes is the mouth, the fish, this is the nucleus, all this is the nucleus. This is the cytoplasm, the nucleus, and what is doing these monocytes are going to be the big eaters, the big eaters. So these monocytes, 
are when you but the monocyte is like this, like this. But when you bother the monocytes or the monocyte are active, the monocytes are going. This is the monocyte. The monocyte then transform, convert as a transformer into a big cell that is called the macrophage. Macrophage. This is the monocyte, and the monocyte convert, transform into macrophage. Macrophage, big cell. Why is that? Because the macrophage, what is doing is the is the big eater. So they are going to be more capacity to eat. If they are big, they are going to eat more in different areas. As they eat for everywhere, so they are going to try to eat by phagocytosis the bacteria. This macrophage is huge because it's not huge in size, but important because that is the initiation of the of the third line of defense. So the monocytes, when they go macrophages, macrophages are actually going to present or they're going to go to the cell line of defense, the lymphocytes to be activated. So macrophages are huge and important. Monocytes, how to remember? M, M is the only one who have M. M monocyte, M macrophage, the only ones. We don't, neutrophilis is N, L, C, N, E, basophilis is B, lymphocytes is L, so you don't have choice to, to get the mistake. Monocyte M, macrophage M. All right, so monocytes convert into macrophages. Be okay with that? Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right, so let's go to, all right, I'm going to go, this is, I'm going to do it two times, one in, in, in bioscience and one in anatomy physiology. So let's go to the very important topic that is the specific immune system. And please pay attention to this, okay? All right, so a specific immune system, a specific immune system, or third line of defense are going to be classified in two. This is important to know about HIV and all that, okay? You will know why. We have the lymphocyte B. And the lymphocyte C. Okay, the lymphocytes B, first thing I want you to tell me, why do you think lymphocytes B is called lymphocytes B? Somebody have an idea? Like antibodies? Very good try, very good try. B is more simple, I would say. You will never forget now. Lymphocytes B, because these lymphocytes, they're going to born and get mature in the bone. B, bone. Okay? And the lymphocytes T, they're going to born in the bone, but they get mature in the thymus, thymus, thymus. Where is the thymus? The thymus is retroesternal, means behind the sternum, correct? So this I need to uh, basically tell you the story about the thymus. All right. So that's why Lymphocytes T is called lymphocytes T because they get mature in the thymus. We okay with that? Okay. Yes. All right, so let's talk about the thymus. The thymus is a lymphoid organ that is going to develop normally in normal, uh, very early in fetal, fetal stage, in the fetus. These thymus are going to have a very important role in order to know you need to understand why the body, how the body recognizes 
which one is your cell of your body and which one is an enemy. So let's suppose, let's suppose that you are in your room. The room is the times. Okay? You, you are in the times. Your room is your times. Okay? And the house is your body. Okay? So the lymphocytes that are they're born into the in the bone, they are going to travel to the thymus in very early stages. And they are going to stay in the in the thymus. It's like a college, let's put it that way. You are going to receive instructions to know what to do. Now, what is the function of the uh, what are doing the lymphocytes in the thymus? What is happening is this: you are in the thymus. You are you are lymphocyte T. You are a lymphocyte T. Your room is the thymus. Now I'm going to instruct you to, to do this. I want you to open the door uh, of your of your room that is the thymus. Go out of the thymus and explore, explore every single piece of your body, everything. And you will what you're going to do this. You're going to say, oh, this is my TV. Oh, this is my my picture. Oh, this is my lamp. This is my couch. This is my floor. This is my glass. This is my spoon. This is my plate, my dishes, whatever. So everything that you see, the lymphocytes are going to recognize for us as part of your body. And they keep memory of that. They keep memory of that. So at the time that bacteria is coming, the bacteria is a different organism. When the bacteria is coming in, the lymphocytes T are not able to recognize as that that is part of your body, right? And they are going to say, oh, this is an antigen. And they are going to kill it because of that. You okay with that? Is that clear? Or uh, yeah. <laughs> now, Tell me, do you hear about problems we call autoimmune disease? Autoimmune disease? Yes. Okay. So listen to this very clear. An autoimmune disease is this. Auto means yourself. So you are attacking your own cells, your own body. That is an autoimmune disease. For example, who is an autoimmune disease? Rheumatoid arthritis. Rheumatoid arthritis. What is a rheumatoid arthritis? The, the cells of your joints, articulations, are going to be destroyed. And actually, that belongs to your body. So how come they are going to be destroyed? What happened is this. We don't know the reason. We don't know how is that happened. If we will know, we will resolve the problem. But so far, we don't know. The lymphocytes T, what happened? is they lost memory. They become amnesic. They forgot which belongs to your body, which is not belong to your body. So now the lymphocytes T are going to go to the joints, for example, and they lost the memory say, I don't know you. I don't recognize you. You are enemy. I need to kill you. And that's how rheumatoid arthritis, the articulations are being destroyed with the time. Those are autoimmune disorders, autoimmune disease. Autoimmune disorders, for example, we have the rheumatoid arthritis. We have myasthenia gravis, multiple sclerosis, chronic ulcerative colitis, Crohn's disease, psoriasis, sclerodermia, diabetes type one. So there is different lupus are going to be Autoimmune disorders. So many that it's not the time to talk about that. Probably I'm going to mention if we have time today. Okay? You okay with that? So yep. you already know what are the lymphocytes T, where are coming from. The time. Okay? All right, so let's continue. Okay, the lymphocytes B that mostly are in the uh, are uh, circulating in the bloodstream. That's what. That's why it's called humoral, 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 uh, humoral, uh, humoral, humoral. Humor means fluid. Humoral means fluid. Humoral, right? So, for example, remember the aqueous humor. 
is fluid, right? Humor means fluid in life. So humoral. So that means that is running into the blood. The lymphocytes T, the lymphocytes B are going to be two of them. And you will make sense everything now. We have the, the B memory cells. B memory cells. These B memory cells are going to keep the memory of the enemy. After the enemy enter for the first time, for the first time into your body, the B memory cells are going to, they're going to remember after that, that that is an enemy. And they are going to produce the, uh, the inflammatory process. So the B memory cells is like, for example, you have the war, the enemy is coming with a new weapon. They are going to, for the first time, it's killing everybody. And then we, we are going to kill one of these enemies, study which weapons they have. And we, with these weapons, we know what other weapons we can do or create to produce in order to destroy the enemy. So that is the function of the B memory cells. Okay, B memory cell, memory, that's it. What are doing the B memory cells? Memory. You understand that is the memory or the uh, recall of the enemy that was coming in the past. Okay, so that's why, for example, you have uh, hepatitis A. Hepatitis A. Everybody have hepatitis A. Uh, Fifty percent of people, less than five years old, they have hepatitis A, and after that, they don't have hepatitis A anymore because in the first attack, you develop hepatitis A. That is like a simple cold. Even we don't know that this is what I say because it's like a simple code. But the second time, the body is ready. So it's coming that but there is A, immediately it's been destroyed. So you don't have the batteries A anymore. Why? Because the B memory cells. Be okay with that? Then the the B the lymphocytes B are going to divide it into the plasmatic cells. This is important, huh? Plasmatic cells. Plasmatic cells, what are those? Are lymphocytes B. And the plasmatic cells, what they are going to produce are the antibodies. You don't need to write down this. I mean, antibodies like that, you can write it down like that, or immunoglobulins. You okay with that? Yes. These plasmatic cells are markers for destruction. For destruction. That is the function of the, of the plasmatic cells that are lymphocyte B. Plasmatic cells are a type of lymphocyte B that are going to produce antibodies. So these antibodies, called immunoglobulins as well, is going to be immunoglobulin G, A, M, E, and B. So just remember, game D. So these different antibodies one in the skin one in the fluid one in the first one so i'm not going to go on that just remember that there is game d so g a m e d so you know already all the market for the stroke that's it about the lymphocytes b okay let's talk about the lymphocytes t the lymphocytes t are going to have several subtypes one is the helper the T helper or called CD4. We have the T cytotoxic or killer. It's called the CD8. We have another T memory cell. That is the T memory cells, the one who recognize your body, right? The T memory cells. And we have the T regulator. T regulator T cell. Okay. So what is doing the T regulator? So let's talk about, let's talk about the C cytotoxic. This cytotoxic is the one who are going to this is the bacteria. The immunoglobulins are going to mark for destruction, mark for destruction. They are going to mark for destruction. 
And what happened? The, the T cytotoxic cells are going to recognize these markers and then they're going to destroy the bacteria. Okay? Got it. Okay. The T memory cells, what is the difference between T memory cells with the B memory, B memory cells? The t, and that is, you remember the vaccines, we are going to explain very much later. The T memory cells can last for few weeks up to many years, many years. The memory cells, these T B mem the B memory cells, they last few days to few months. So some vaccinations are going to be better than others. And I'm, I'm not going to stop that because there is a huge topic there, okay? So just to, we are doing the basic right now. So we have the T memory cells, the T cytotoxic or killer cells, and we have the T regulator. The T regulator, what is the T regulator? The T regulator is when you are in the fight, and you're winning the war, you start to win the war, the T regulators are going to see, it's like the peacemaker, peacemaker. The T regulator said, oh, oh, we are winning. Okay, okay, lymphocytes, white cells, everybody go to their bases. We already win. So that is what is going to stop the immune, uh, immune defense because we already win the war. So everybody go to their bases. You okay with that? Yes. And I left at the end the T helper for a reason. The T helper, the T helper, I don't know how I can start doing this. Okay, so let's do this one. The T helper, and then we are going to do the bridge. The T helper, the T helper, when it's activated, the T helper is the one who is sending orders to the B memory cells. The T helper as well are going to send orders to the plasmatic cells to produce antibodies. The T helper is going to send orders to the cytotoxic cells to kill the bacteria. The T memory cell, the T helper, CD4, are going to activate the T memory cells. And the T helper is going to send orders to the T regulator cell. So the T helper is the pivot. Pivot, pivot, okay. In basketball, right? The one who delivered uh, the ball, right? So that is huge importance for the immune system, the T helper or CD4. You okay with that? Yep. Okay. So let's draw a bacteria. Now let's do the bridge. The connection with this with the previous one. Everybody is everything is going, you have that you're going to have the sensation of make sense everything now. So here we have the bacteria. This is a bacteria. I'm going to be bacteria. No, I'm going to put it antigen, right? You're talking properly now, right? Antigen. All right. So what is happening with this antigen? This antigen are going to, first of all, they pass the first line of defense. They are in your tissues or in your blood, whatever, attacking. Then the second line of defense are going to be activated. The second lines of defense, the neutrophils are going to kill a, a bacteria. The eosinophils are going to basically uh, target, uh, how you call it, the snipers are going to kill the bacteria. Uh, the, uh, the basophils are going to release histamine to activate other cells to come for help because the histamine produces inflammation. They are going to make wider the vessels, vasodilation, to bring more forces, more army, more soldiers to the area of attack. And what is actually important as well is this, the monocyte. The monocyte is coming and they are going to phagocyte this antigen. But before they do that, there's going to be, if there is minor infection, monocytes, that's it. But it's going to take more than three weeks, or more than three days, sorry, more than three days, they are going to transform into macrophage. Macrophage. These macrophage are going to kill 
the antigen. When they kill the antigen, when they kill the antigen, they have inside the macrophage are pieces of the dead bacteria or dead virus. And what happened? The macrophage are going to go and send the information of that to the e helper. T helper. The T helper now is going to send orders to the B memory cells, to the plasmatic cells. The plasmatic cells are going to send, or uh, uh, plasmatic cells are going to send antibodies who are going to mark for destruction the, uh, the, the bacteria. And then the T helper is going to send the cytotoxic cells to kill the bacteria. They are going to send T memory cells to keep memory or recording of the situation for the future and they last longer than the B memory cells. B memory cells up to months, T memory cells up to years. And then when the war is winning, the T helpers send orders to the T regulator saying, well, we win, everybody go to their bases. You like it? I do. Um, what's the exact um, timeline of the memory cells again for their lifespan? Life is about months, six months. For B, B memory cells. B, B memory cells, yes. And the T memory cells, they go months to years, up to 10 years. Gotcha. Got it? And there is more to come. So we are going to do dynamics in the classroom when it's the time. Uh, by the way, in your classroom, it's going to be more students in next anatomy, because they are doing, uh, I don't know, there's like 10 students more coming for your group, huh? Yeah. You're going to help me on that, okay? Because I don't want to, I want to keep the pace. All right. So now, uh, all right, so that is about the immune system. You okay with that? All right, so now, Tell me, how much we know about the immune system from the beginning and now, right? It's a big difference, right? Hopefully, yes. And uh, take a, so this immune system for me was like six months course in, in my university. It was a killer. Oh my God, I was hating this very much. Hating very much. But I have to study that. But what I gave you is in 20 minutes, the nutshell of what you really need to focus on. In the past, for example, for me, it was neutral fields study one week. One week, wow, was all the receptors, all the stuff. And was separate. But now I integrate it in a few, in a few minutes in order to have the big vision about it. OK? All right. So now let's go to the second, second review of the immune system. All right, so here we have B cells, immunoglobulins, that's all, or antibodies, Ig, all called AB. We already talked about that. So you can read that, it's the same thing I was basically uh, talking about. In anatomy, physiology, I'm going to go again to the topic. All right, so this, they want to talk about the vaccine. All right, so let's make a little bit about vaccine. Okay. So the vaccine is going to be basically different type of vaccines. The active can be attenuated. That is a living organism that is uh, basically uh, burned to death. So they are not going to be able, it's like you said, you put a prey and the animals are coming to eat and the animal cannot protect himself, whatever. Okay, it's a bad example, sorry for that. I don't like to. Anyhow, so it's, like uh, uh, the vaccine is like they put a piece of a bacteria or a piece of a virus. This piece of virus or bacteria by itself is not going to multiply because it's just a piece. It's just a piece. That piece contains the proteins that are characteristic for that virus or that bacteria. So when the bacteria is getting or the virus is getting into your body as a vaccine, that virus or bacteria that do not reproduce, the immune system are going to recognize those proteins. 
What is the advantage? The advantage is the virus of bacteria is not reproducing. We are not fighting with thousands of millions of bacteria or viruses, only with few of them that are really not able to reproduce. But is we, our body is able to recognize those uh, elements or proteins that are strangers. And that is going to trigger out the whole system. Neutrophils, uh, basophils, eosinophils, monocytes transforming macrophages. Macrophages take that piece of that virus piece of the bacteria to the T helper. The T helper then, when they receive, this is the presenting. They are going to present. Oh, this is the enemy, Mr. T helper. All right, so the T helper said, okay. So, okay, B memory cells, act. T memory cells, act. Plasmatic cells, act. Uh, uh, um, uh, cytotoxic cells, act. The, the uh, regular cells, T cells are going to act. So the, the sequence is variable. There is no specific order on that. They can do simultaneously, since at the same time. Now, tell me one thing. If you don't produce antibodies, the immune system can recognize the bacteria to be killed? No, right? No. So you must have antibodies that, re that are going to mark for destruction. If there is no mark for destruction, the lymphocytes killers do not know who to kill. They don't know what to kill. You okay with that? Now, listen to this. How many boosts, how many injections do you have for your first uh, vaccination of COVID-19? One or two, to complete, to be safe. Two, right? And after how many days the first dose? A month. Two weeks. After two weeks. Two weeks. You can do it after one month, but it's better two weeks. All right, so now, listen to this. When you are, and two weeks is actually, though, remember those two first weeks after the first vaccine, you still be, you, I was, everybody was still afraid to get COVID, right? Because you was not full protect, correct? Yes or no? Yes. Okay, why is that? Look at this. When the, when the, when the COVID-19 piece of virus get into your body, they are going to have the neutrophils, et cetera, et cetera. The macrophage presenting, presenting, presenting to the T, T helper or CD4, and they produce the plasmatic cells to produce the antibodies. That process takes two weeks. Two weeks. So you take, you from the contact with the virus or bacteria, you need two weeks to prepare your body, to start fighting efficiently. So the antibodies are going to be, for a first contact, are going to take about two weeks to be acting. You okay with that? Yeah. No. And that is the active vaccination. That is an active vaccination. Okay. Remember, uh, President Trump was having COVID-19? Remember that? Yes. He was putting Lysol in his blood. Lysol, right? No, no, I'm just kidding. Lysol, you cannot put it in your, in your, in your blood. But actually, at that time, was not a vaccine yet. So how we was protecting the President of the United States, besides whatever name it is, right? We need to protect them, right? And what they was doing is this. They was giving already produced antibodies for the virus. The first day he had the, the COVID positive, they give antibodies. Where is coming from these antibodies? This antibody was coming from other people who survive at the COVID-19. They take a sample of their blood they filter the antibodies that that person was producing and multiply, they clonate them. 
and they put it into the blood of the president. So the antibodies was immediately working because those antibodies are specific for the COVID-19. Every disease has a specific antibodies. Every disease, A, B, C, D, H, A, B, C, D, each of them, they have a different type of antibodies. You okay with that? So these antibodies was marking for destruction and the body was protecting, help, uh, fighting against that. Waiting for the two weeks that their body produced his own antibodies and start to work more efficiently. Is that, are you okay with that? Yeah. The problem with the antibodies is that you inoculate, inject antibodies, and these antibodies have a short period of time of, of life. And they, once it's been depleted, you need to have more antibodies. So you need to give more antibodies, more antibodies, uh, until two weeks. After two weeks, you don't need it anymore because your body is already a machine who produces the antibodies in huge amounts. You okay with that? Okay. So let's talk about this. That is what we call, we have the active vaccination that is giving you a piece of the, of the bacteria or virus into your body. And the other one is the passive. Write it down, this, please. There is two types of vaccinations, the active and the passive. Active and passive. Type of vaccination, active and passive. Active and passive. Passive, passive. How do you say passive? Passive. Passive, passive. Okay. Passive. Passive. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Passive and active. Active is when they give you uh, a piece of the virus bacteria. And passive is when you get, when you receive antibodies produced by somebody else. Do you with that? Okay. All right, so this is uh, what we talk about, the lymphocytes T, the T helpers. So the, the, uh, the T cells. The T cells we are going to have, we, we don't, I'm not going to you make you remember first order, second order, third order. No, it's just the story I was telling you. We have the T helper, CD4. CD4 means cluster differentiation. It's a colony, a group of cells in the, in the, in the uh, hematopoiesis, the production of white cells. So it's called CD4 classical. And T killers of cytotoxins, the CD8. Okay, so now I want just to tell you one thing here. HIV. HIV is the immuno, uh, human immunodeficiency virus, correct? And AIDS is acquired, acquired immunodeficiency disease, right? So what is the difference between AIDS and HIV? I told you before that. Okay, HIV is having the virus. AIDS have the virus too. The difference is the HIV infected person with HIV do not have signs and symptoms yet. Why? Because they didn't deplete the lymphocytes completely or too low. And AIDS, when the lymphocytes are going down, that is when you start, you don't have a way to protect yourself against enemy, against infections. And that is when you start to have signs and symptoms. So HIV, no signs and symptoms, but you have the virus. And AIDS, you have signs, you have infections because your immune system is weak and you are infected with HIV as well. All right, so listen to this. From all of these cells that we was talking, lymphocytes B, memory, plasmatic cells, T helper, cytotoxic, uh, the uh, regulator and the T memory cells, the, the HIV virus, what is going to destroy? What do you think is going to destroy? Which of these cells? The cells who are going to be destroyed by the HIV virus is the T helper. Wow. Right? If the T helper is the one who destroy, is being destroyed by the HIV, there is no, there is no, nobody who command to give orders what to do, what not to do. You got it? So the T helper that is the one who 
give orders to everybody is not going to be present. And what happened? Bacteria, infections and start to occur. You all right? Okay. So let's go to the inflammatory process that is the, the last part, inflammation, uh, inflammation histamine. Uh, probably if I have time, as I mentioned about the, some autoimmune disorders, but basically my main goal is this. All right, so listen, write down this, please. The fever, fever, what is the normal temperature of your body? 97 to 100, endless heads, et cetera, right? 97 to 100, right? In elderly people, 100 is considered fever already, okay? All right, why? Because elderly people do not have those amount of enzyme because it's more catabolic, do not, it's less anabolic. You don't produce as many proteins as before. And enzymes that are in the white cells are proteins. So that's why the immune defense of the elderly people is poor. Okay, now, fever. Fever promotes the phagocytosis. Fever promotes phagocytosis. Fever promotes phagocytosis. Fever promotes phagocytosis. So what do you understand from that? You understanding that the cells eat more? No. They don't eat more. Fever, what it's doing is to make the highway more wider so they can travel more blood and more white cells. And that is going to increase the phagocytosis because you are bringing more number of base of, of monocytes and neutrophils that produce the phagocytosis. Is that clear or not? You okay with that? All right, so that is what is doing fever. All right, so don't forget that. Now, the thermostat of the fever, who is going to uh, uh, increase the temperature? The temperature is going to be that the thermostat is the hypothalamus. Hypothalamus, 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 hypothalamus. Okay? And the, and the, and who is the finger who moved the thermostat? The hypothalamus. The finger <laughs> who changed the thermostat are going to be some substances that are going to uh, be called cytokines. So I'm not going to go on that. You can call lymphokines, interleukins, interleukins. So we have many more, but they're actually local, let's call local messengers so far. Local messengers of the infection are going to make the thermostat, the hypothalamus, to increase the temperature. And that you start to have fever. Okay? All right. Let's talk about inflammation. We talk about the cardinal signs of inflammation. We talk about that. All right. So that is the time to do it again. Okay. So please, this is coming for the exam. And that is huge. You can tell other students in the future, if you understand that, it's going to be so different. So, inflammatory process is a cardinal sign, cardinal sign of inflammation. Um, Dr. J. Yes, sir. It's the one that's like um, pain, redness, edema, yes. heat, the function. Yes, yes. I'm going to repeat it again, okay? Uh, uh, you can add more, so I'm going to add more stuff, but like examples, no more material. Just in order to, because this is crucial, very important for us, thank you for that. Cardinal signs, cardinal means special, unique, uh, unique, right? So cardinal, cardinal signs of inflammation. So that is I, what I call the table of five. Table of five. Table of five, we have table of six, table of 10, you will let table of five. That is the first, one of the first table. Number one, you're going to cut your finger, the same example with a, with a needle, just to make an example. And what you're going to have is pain. Number two is going to 
be what? It's going to be a, a pain, uh, redness. Imagine, imagine your, your finger being injury, redness, hot, it's going to be warm. Because there is a lot of congestion of blood. So you, your finger become red and become actually warm for edema. Edema. It's accumulation of fluid in the tissue. And five, loss of the function. I'm going to give you, I give you the remoteur arthritis the last time as example. I'm going to give you uh, another example. Let's see, congestion. Okay, so cold, a cold, simple cold. A simple cold, I'm going to try to draw here is the, the nose. Here is the nostril. This is the entry of the nose. So you're looking here inside, right? So that is the septum. This septum, this inner, if you put your finger on your nose, you will see that there is a mucus here. It's the lining, the mucus. The, sorry, the mucosa. The mucosa. The mucosa. Okay? So in this mucosa, what we are going to have are vessels. Vessels. Vessels these vessels. What happened with, you have an inflammation, you have a, a cold, these uh, actually produce histamine. The histamine is a messenger for inflammation. Inflammatory inflammation messenger. When the histamine is going to be released, you have that your nose, you have a cell here, the pollen, or dust, for example, or bacteria or virus are going to go to the cells. So the cells of the mucosa of the of the nose, they are going to attack this cell, and the cell are going to produce histamine. Histamine. This histamine produces an inflammatory process, inflammation. And what happened with these vessels? These vessels at the beginning are like this, but now with the histamine, they are going to become like that. They so dilated. And what happened then? The water that is inside are going to, because the permeability of the, is the is like you have, you stretch out the the spaces between cell to cells on the walls of the vessels are going to be more apart. And what happened? The water starts to escape. Start to escape. Where in the mucosa. So in the mucosa starts to get swollen. Swollen, swollen, swollen. And they are, see, they are given close the airway. So that is called congestion. You got it? You cannot breathe on that. And that is actually edema. Okay, edema. So in the inflammatory process, when you cut your finger, the vessels, when you have, they are going to release a prostaglandin that we are going to see now. The vessels are going to, before the injury is like this. But then, after the injury, what happened? They produce vasodilation. This water starts to escape and produce edema. So when you have a wound, it's not swollen because of the inflammatory process. And why is this vasodilation happen? Because instead to have two or three, uh, uh, four or five, uh, two, four, six uh, white cells, you're going to have hundreds of them now. Because there is the highway, the highway, the, uh, the vessels are going to bring more blood to the area of the fight. You okay with that? Yes. Yeah. Warm is coming for increase of chemical reactions. The, the process of destruction and regeneration are going to increase the metabolism of that area, releasing more temperature, and basically because at the same time for that congestion, there is more friction against the the walls, and that can produce a sensation of temperature. And the loss of the function. Loss of the function are going to be, for example, in the rheumatoid arthritis. So that is happening, the loss of the function happens in the long run. So if you have rheumatoid arthritis, in the rheumatoid arthritis, what happens is that you have pain, redness, warm edema, right? And then after 20 years, 30 years of having rheumatoid arthritis, the 
articulation is not going to be the same as before. And what happened? We start to basically deform the articulation. So after 20, 30 years to have rheumatoid arthritis, even though you're in the treatment, you start to limp. The limp is the loss of the function of the knee, for example. You okay with that? Yeah. Another thing is this, that this, uh, this uh, in cirrhosis in uh, alcoholics, in alcoholics, in alcoholics, you're going to have the liver start to have certain size, 20 to 75, doesn't matter, size. <clears throat> you take alcohol, alcohol is going to damage the liver, producing hepatitis. Hepatitis is not just virus A, B, C, and D, and E, another one who is being discovered very soon. Very fast, uh, there's a, a, a mysterious hepatitis, and we don't know which is a virus or not, so that's under study right now. In this last week, I, in last week, Anyhow, so hepatitis is just not viruses. Hepatitis could be alcohol. It could be, uh, for example, if you drink Windex, your liver is going to be totally destroyed. You have excess of some medications that, that produce hepatitis as well. If you eat mushrooms that are poisonous mushrooms, they produce hepatitis, in liver failure, liver failure, okay? So now, Alcohol, you're going to take alcohol for one, one day, one week, one month, one year, five years, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years. So permanently your liver is being inflamed. And what happened? The liver with a, without a long time being inflamed, what happened? The liver is, get tired to regenerate and start to replace the normal tissue with the scars leading into cirrhosis. And what happened with the liver? The liver shrink. And that is going to make loss the function of the liver. The liver is a very noble, noble organ, very noble organ. Because if you destroy 10% of the liver, the liver doesn't complain, it's still working normal. If you destroy 20% of the liver, the liver is still working without complaint. If you destroy 50% of the liver, your liver is still working fine. If you destroy 70%, the liver start to uh, the liver keep working without complaining. 80% is when you reach the time. At 80% of the structure of the liver, the liver start to lose their functions. Liver failure. And it's too late. Okay? All right, so we'll give you that. Yep. All right, so fever, bacteremia. Bacteremia is the presence of bacteria in the in the in the blood. Sepsis is an infection. Sepsis and se systemic sepsis basically are similar. What is sepsis? Sepsis is basically a multi-systemic infection, multi or multi, multi-systemic infection. The bacteria are going to reproduce every 20 minutes average. So the early detection, the best. If not, what is infection? Invasion, uh, growth, reproduction, and spreading out. And they are going to spread out from one system to another system. You can have the blood, uh, is the, the bacteria reach the blood, the bacteria, the blood is going to go all the systems, and they are going to spread out the infection. That is called septicemia. Okay, septicemia. So it's a multi systemic. So, seps, to not, not get confused, sepsis, systemic sepsis, septicemia basically are the same. Septic infection. The patient is septic. The patient is septic. So, that means that they was having bacteremia, they want the bacteria in different organs and produce multi systemic infection. So the infections are going to be in the GI tract, central nervous system, urinary system, everywhere. And that is basically very, very bad prognosis. All right. To finish, uh, let's go here. Okay, so I'm going to mention that we have autoimmune disorders, the T memory cells, they lost the uh, memory. We have rheumatoid arthritis, we have multiple sclerosis. The multiple sclerosis is this. So you have here a neuron 
and you have the myelin here. The myelin that is basically uh, produced by the Schwann cells, Schwann cells that are actually fat, type of fat, is, uh, that is the myelin. This myelin is located here in these uh, cells. All these have myelin, 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 myelin. And what they are going to do is to accelerate, accelerate the electrical impulse. All right, so, so knowing that this multiple sclerosis is an autoimmune disorder, who are going to destroy who? Are going to destroy the shown cells. So there is no myelin, there is no myelin. And the transmission is going to be very slow. You have a lot of uh, a muscular uh, uh, lack of coordination. You have some pain, numbness. So that is the multiple sclerosis. So the immune system, in this case, they are going to lose the memory and what they don't remember basically are the cells that are, uh, the, the proteins that are in the Schwann cells. So that is going to be destroyed. In rheumatoid arthritis, the articulation. Lupus are going, this is a very good example of lupus. Lupus, lupus means wolf. Wolf. So, and lupus, the characteristic of lupus is that you, is an autoimmune disorder. This autoimmune disorder are going to affect especially the kidneys. The kidneys, 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 lupus. Lupus means wolf. So how is, why is called wolf? In Latin means wolf. Somebody was exposed to the sunlight and the sunlight produced, uh, we have like allergy to the sunlight. And what happened, you have rash on the cheeks and in the nose, here, here, here. Why is that? Why? Not because it's a mystery, it's because when you go to the sunlight, the area more prominence of your face are going to be the cheeks, the nose, and the forehead. So those areas are most likely by the angle of your face, more exposed to the sunlight. And that reaction occurs basically in that area. Can produce even ulcers, ulcers. Okay, so that is the lupus, lupus and autoimmune disorder. Ah, and what is that? Somebody said in the past, oh, look like a wolf. I don't know what is the wolf here. So look like a wolf because of this rush, and that is actually called lupus. Lupus erythematosus, erythema means rush. Okay? The last one is uh, myasthenia gravis, and I need to go back because I need to talk about prostaglandins. Oh, can you give me five minutes, please? I'm sorry again. Yeah, no worries. Okay, myasthenia gravis is what they're going to do is each muscle have a receptor. This receptor is activated by the acetylcholine. Acetylcholine. This acetylcholine is the one who produces the contraction of the muscle. So this myasthenia gravis, all the receptors for the stimulation of the of the of the fiber of the muscle are going to be destroyed. So myasthenia gravis you don't have the ability to contract muscles and you die respiratory failure arrest because the diaphragm is affected so my gravis. so i just giving some example i'm not going to ask this in the, in the exam my gravis, lupus multiple sclerosis and rheumatoid arthritis i want to tell you one thing here about this any autoimmune disorder are going to be affecting the whole body whatever autoimmune disorder you have is the whole body but we don't know the cause or reason but these autoimmune disorders some are going to affect more the kidney like for example lupus but they are going to affect other parts of the body in rheumatoid arthritis they are going to affect most likely the the joints but they can affect other parts of the body other organs other structures so autoimmune disorders is general, but the rheumatoid arthritis is more specific to joints. Myasthenia gravis to the muscle. Multiple sclerosis to the myelin. Lupus to the kidney. You okay with that? Okay, so now let's finish with that. I think we talked about uh, prostaglandins before, right? So look at this. This, can you see this deformity of the hands? 
Yes. That is the loss of the function after many years. The five cardinal signs of inflammation. All right, so just to finish this part, to, to finish everything, we are going to make another angle here. So what is this? Very fast, please. Phospholipid bilayer. Exactly, phospholipid bilayer. So what happened here? Look at this. We are going to have an injury. You cut your finger, cut your, uh, cut your finger, your skin. So injury. And what is going to happen? It's going to release histamine. The histamine is going to activate the, the uh, I'm going to react with the phospholipids through the phospholipase. This is an enzyme called the phospholipase that is going to produce the arachidonic acid. This arachidonic acid are going to have produced the leukotriens and produce the prostaglandins. Leukotriens, what they are doing is because of injury, histamine, phospholipase, arachidonic acid, leukotriens are local messengers to call more white cells. So that is what happens when you have an injury. They are going to make local messengers, lo leukotriens, so please, local messengers, don't forget that, this is important. Local messengers. What are leukotriens? Leukotriens are local messengers for what? To call more white cells. Now, the prostaglandins are as well, are local messengers as well. Local messengers. But these local messengers, you need to remember these four forever. Number one are going to be for pain. Local messenger for pain. You have pain because you read prostaglandins. Inflammation, there you are. Inflammatory process. Clotting and mucus. Mucus, mucus, all right, mucus. So those are the four actions of the prostaglandins. Prostaglandins are called prostaglandins because it was discovered first on the prostate. But then they find out that these local messengers are in every single cell of your body, the 100 trillion cells of your body. And they are going to release messengers for pain. So when you hit, your, your, your injure your finger, you're going to produce prostaglandins, local messenger for pain, you start to feel pain. Inflammation, inflammation, the five cardinal signs the five cardinal signs, the, the table of five. Clotting, we are going to see that later, clotting and mucus. So I want you to remember these two first. Okay, and we don't have time to do the rest. So, but this is kind of interesting, but anyhow. So now, when you have pain, what you're doing? You're taking, you're taking ibuprofen, yes or no? Yes. yes. So the ibuprofen, what it's doing is to block the production of local messages for pain. That is the ibuprofen or the motor, if you want, motor. They're going to cut this. So they're going to produce injury, histamine, arachidonic acid, prostaglandin, but they're not producing local messages for pain. So your pain bothers. Is this inflamed? Okay, let's take uh, ibuprofen again. And they're going to cut this. So that is basically a little bit of, of hint about what is coming later on. Okay, so that's it about. So very fast, please. Eric, what 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 do you think about the class? It's good. I like um, the part where you talked about the uh, tea helpers and the order of it. I think that was very interesting, especially with all the visuals that you put up. So it was, it was good. Yeah. Thank you, Miss Eric. Thank you. Anything to be improved, let me know, please. Okay. Uh, Miss O, what do you think? What is your opinion? You like lymph which lymphocyte is your favorite, Miss O? Um, you have um, here, uh, my favorite is only lymphatic system, and the rest are very. <laughs> um, I, I like the lymphatic system and the 
about the disease. I have to, I have to read and I have to listen. Okay, Mr. Okay, Rowe, Ms. Rowe. Yeah. Thank you. Marilyn, please. Um, yeah, it was a good lecture. I learned a lot today. Um, I didn't know much, but now I know a lot. You will see things differently now. When you talk about rheumatoid arthritis, immune defense, right? So, uh, Mr. Daniel, please. Uh, I liked a lot the autoimmune disorders. Um, getting some more information and on those was helpful. Okay, thank you. Marcel, please. Um, everything was good today. It was cool seeing how the prostaglandins and the leukotrienes come back after learning about it when we were discussing lipids. You see, excellent. The inflammatory process, the prostaglandins, the immune system, the uh, selective, no selective, everything is together. Everything is coming together. So you need to go over, over again. I'm going to do this in anatomy physiology one more time. And uh, yeah, so that's all for today. I really appreciate your time and your efforts, and I hope you enjoy as much as I enjoy this class. And I will see you uh, today is Wednesday, right? On Sunday, I will see you on Sunday. Okay. What time, Dr. G, on Sunday? Uh, it's early. And then um, for our previous quizzes, can you post them? so we can review them. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, just text me just to remind me if there is no, to, uh, uh, tomorrow, tomorrow, just text me, please. If I don't put it, I, I will put it right away. So, because I cannot open because of that. I prefer to do all together, but in the, at night we have a quiz. So I will do it after that. Do um, all, quiz, you, all quizzes. Okay. Everything you can send yes. like a lot into. Yeah. Okay. All right, guys. Thank you so much. I will see you next time. And uh, yeah. And Dr. G, final exam uh, is going to be um, from uh, what lecture 11 to the end? No, no, no. All the lectures. One to. Are you from lecture when? Yeah. Okay. All, the, all the lectures. Okay. All right. For that, we are going to do tutoring as well. No, no worry. I'm going to guide you on that. Okay. All right, so thank you so much. Have a good night, everybody. Everybody, I will see you next time. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Daniel, yes or no? Yes, sir. Yeah. With all, thank you. Uh, Daniel, to make it simple, we can do an exam at 5 p.m. I'm going to Proctor. We don't need to have Google meeting. Okay. Okay. Five, uh, 5 p. Uh, yeah, 5 p.m. You start your exam. Be okay with that? Will do. Yeah, just text me if there is actually difficulties on the exam. So you will see the very clear your exam. Which exam was? Uh, I, I, will I, will, I will check. I will check. So you just text okay. me. And we will just make my exam today. Okay. Gotcha. Thank you. Appreciate it, Thank you. Thank you.